What is going on everyone? Fernando Silva here with another video and iPadOS 14.5 Beta 5 released yesterday to developers and then probably today to public developers for us to test out. Now again, it's a Beta 5 update, which means that we're gonna see less and less visual differences and more of just solidifying all those bug fixes and making sure the software is performing the way it should be for when it does release to the public whenever that's gonna be. We thought it was gonna be March 23rd, but now I'm thinking probably early April when they have their event, but let's see when it actually happens. But without further ado, let's see what's going on. So let's get into the build number first. So I'm gonna go into my images here, and you guys can see that we are looking at about 197 megabytes. So give yourself about 400 megabytes in order to actually get this installed. And again, we're looking at iPadOS, 14.5 beta 5 so definitely follow me on Twitter if you guys want to find out the you know the latest when it comes to updates for iPad OS and things like that but if we get out of here let's go into the settings let's see the build number and see how different it is because the last build number we had actually ended in a and normally after an a build number we move into just the regular either RC or Grandmaster Edition but Apple kind of changed it up on us a little bit right so if we go in here click on the 14.5 you can see that it still ends in an a so it's 18e51 86a now that basically means one main thing that this update is going to be very very small and we noticed that from the size of the update because normally the updates are about half a gigabyte to a gigabyte this one's only about 200 megabytes and then the update software version ends in a again but they're still calling it beta 5 and i wonder why that is because if we go into you know what's new with the actual software from a performance standpoint very usable you know the multitasking is great the performance is awesome Everything seems to be very clicky and responsive. I haven't had any real issues with anything from a performance standpoint. But the only real visual difference that I saw is that they seem to have reverted back to their update screen. So if I go back over here to settings, go to general, go to software update, go to the automatic updates. This is the new interface that we saw with 14.5 beta 4, right? It was download iPadOS updates and you clicked on here. And then it used to say install security updates. But now it's saying install iPadOS updates, and then also on the iOS side, it says install iOS updates. So this is a new look. Again, you're not gonna get anything different from a function standpoint, because at the end of the day, it just means you're updating your iPad whenever the software is released versus updating it whenever you wanna update it, right? So at the end of the day, you're still just updating your device. It just looks a little bit different, which is, I guess, cool, I guess, fine, whatever, you know, to each their own. And I do wanna jump into actual battery life real quick. So let's go back into settings, go to battery, Look at the battery percentage and you can see that we're doing about two hours of screen on time, right? And over the last 10 days, about an hour and 58 minutes, still about two hours of screen on time. But the main thing that I like to tell people to do is look at your activity, right? So show all activity. You can see that LumaFusion took up 50% of my battery and that was really only 41 minutes of usage. Now versus notes, I used it for 30 minutes and it only took up 29%. So that lets you see exactly what applications are hurting you the most from a battery standpoint, and that's expected. Obviously, LumaFusion is a very task-heavy, intensive task, you know, video editor. I'm running 4K, 30 FPS, 4K, 60 FPS. So yeah, it's gonna take up some battery. But then again, things like YouTube, 9%, nine minutes, right? Which, you know, probably isn't great overall, but battery life is getting better. And I do like it over the last 10 days. You can see that LumaFusion, does take up the most amount of power, but hey, that's what I use this machine for, and that's what it's mostly there for. So this is the battery life that I've had with 14.5 beta 4, and now beta 5 as well. And like I said, no real changes, nothing new that I can really report back from a visual standpoint or a software standpoint. So let's get out of this view and go to the normal view. And that is gonna do it for this video, everyone. Like I said in the beginning, this is a beta 5 update, so we're not gonna see any visual changes. We only saw one, and it was barely a change, it was just a reversion back to what it was on beta 3. But other than that, from a performance standpoint, it's very snappy, the performance is great, battery life is getting better. So Apple's making the correct strides with their software updates, especially on the iPad side, to make sure people, even with older devices, have the best experience possible. And then probably the people that are gonna get the new iPad Pro are gonna have an even ex more exceptional experience. But that's iPadOS 14.5. Like I said, we're probably gonna get the final 14.5 version in the next week or so. And let's see how Apple's gonna roll that out to everybody and when they're gonna roll it out. But that's pretty much gonna do it for this video, everyone. Thank you so much for making it to the end. Check out channel sponsor Paperlike if you guys do wanna keep your screen protected and make sure your resale value on your iPad or iPad Pro stays as high as possible. But again, don't forget to comment, like, subscribe. Comment below something that only you would know that I said because you made it to the end of the video. But until next time, peace.